Hello children, I am going on a trip to Delhi this month. What do I do before I go on a trip? The first thing I have to do is I have to pack my things, you know. Oh, sometimes it makes me angry and sometimes it's nice to do. Do you like going on trips, children? Okay, if, you're, if you like to go on trips, what kind of trips do you enjoy the most? And uh, fine, you have planned for a trip. Now, how will you feel about packing for a trip? If you have to pack for a trip, how do you feel? Have you ever discovered on a trip that you have forgotten to pack a few things you very much needed or that you can't find them easily? Have you all come across, have you all experienced such uh, things like, uh, especially, you know, the toothbrush or the uh, towels that we want? Uh, small petty things, you know, we sometimes, we tend to forget. Most of the times we forget. If you go on a trip, you will be happy. You will be happy. And in that moment, we will have forgotten. If we don't pack it, we will be happy. If we don't pack it, we will be happy. We will leave it. And mostly, we will be happy. நம்ம வந்து ஃபர்கெட் பண்ணுற ஒரு திங் எப்படி என்ன அப்படின்னா இட் இஸ் மோஸ்ட்லி த டூத் ப்ரஷ் டால்ஸ் ஹேங்கீஸ் இஸன் இட் யா ஸோ டஸ் திஸ் மேக் யூ ஆங்கிரி ஓர் டஸ் இட் மேக் யூ லாஃப் அட் யோர் செல்ஃப் இட் மேக்ஸ் யூ ஆங்கிரி சம்டைம்ஸ் அண்ட் சம்டைம்ஸ் இட் மேக்ஸ் யூ லாஃப் ரைட் ஸோ நவ் லெட்ஸ் ரீட் திஸ் இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் லெசன் lesson is all about packing this is how the author and his friends pack the author is narrating the uh, experience as to how he felt while packing and it's an extract from three men in a boat okay and the author of this lesson packing packing is the lesson that we're going to see to and the author of this lesson is jerome k jerome so we are going to see to how they packed and what what are the uh, different um, uh, what is that experiences they come across when they are packing so let's see what all they are trying to say how they packed for their uh, uh, journey or their trip okay come on let's get into the chapter now first thing i am going to give you the summary of the lesson and then i will be reading the lesson completely and the word meanings also will be given okay shall we start yes children come on yes packing lesson 7 you know the narrator of the story is jerome and he is very proud of himself he feels that he is the only one who's got the skill of packing okay so he's very proud of his packing skills there are three friends with him all together there are three of them jerome is the narrator then comes george and harris so all these three friends have planned to go on a trip now what uh, jerome does is he told them to leave the whole thing to uh, the whole thing that is the packing work uh, to himself and you know george and harris immediately agreed for what he told because when somebody offers you with a job you know you will you want to be free so immediately you agree so that is what happened to jerome also george what he did was george sat on the easy chair and what he did and harris cocked his legs on the table and watched jerome do the packing very nice and it was jerome's fault right it is not their fault jerome said i will do it myself so both of them left the packing to him and one fellow sat nicely on the easy chair and the other fellow harris he cocked his legs cocked na the kaale abbe rendiyum me onnukku mele onnu potukittu abbe table mele kaale neetikittu um he both of them are watching jerome packing the uh thing luggage 
but this was not uh, jerome's idea jerome actually didn't want this to happen he actually wanted to supervise these fellows and he wanted them to do the work that is what he meant he wanted to be in charge and he wanted to direct his friends under his supervision only he wanted to wanted them to pack but that didn't happen he was actually what yeah what he thought was something different from what was happening over here he felt very uncomfortable jerome ku and the madri chumma ukkand idol abdi ukkand vela aduthavanga vela seiyiradha paathikittu irukiradha avarku pidikave pidikadhu yaarku jerome ku because he was very energetic and what made him uh, because he was very energetic you know he cannot sit in one place avarku vandu supervising job romba pidichirundhu so he wanted to superintend the um, uh, friends that is harris and george and he wanted them to work this is what was his idea but what actually happened these two fellows went and sat easily and left all the whole matter to jerome let's see what happened now he started packing jerome packed the bag and uh, he was about to close the bag when he was about to close it you know harris pointed out and he said jerome you have forgotten to pack the boots so he had to again unzip or he had to again open the bag and pack his boots because he had left the boots out and once he packed the boots you know he was just going to close it now again there is a doubt for jerome if he has packed his toothbrush do pack panna mod onnu na marappo illa first harris udiya shoes marandaachi adutha de ipo avaru udiya jerome udiya brush pack panitoma illaya angra doubt idu romba adikadi he was finding it very difficult jerome had this nightmare only of forgetting to pack his toothbrush so and he will be reminded of it during the nights night time when you know he he used to wake up and go hunt for it he, he'll go search for his toothbrush and in the morning again he'll pack it inside and again in the morning he needs it no to brush his uh, teeth so again he has to unpack it and then repack it and then finally he'll forget it and fi- uh, and where while he is about to leave you know only then he will be reminded marubadi niyapaga varum appo this upstairs would no odi poi he used to rush upstairs and fetch it he used to go and get it and this is what was happening and finally enna pannuvaru he'll take that toothbrush and he'll wrap it up in his pocket handkerchief idu romba adikadi nadakkuradhu the toothbrush udiya problem so this used to irritate him make him so angry so jerome always used to do that so as usual he took he opened the bag again he wanted to search for his uh, brush 18 times he searched for 18 times he found george's and harris's toothbrushes it seems but he could not find his own toothbrush at last what happened he found it inside a boot that boot he packed no inside that boot his toothbrush was and once again he had to repack everything ella kalachi potaachi marubadiyum repack pandraaru after that he finished his packing you know george now starts he is asking him uh, jerome uh, did you keep the soap inside jerome was so ex- exhausted tired of packing he was he just didn't care so what he did he, he didn't care for george's uh, question and enna panitar he strapped the bag strapped na he closed the bag and what he did after s- closing the bag only he noticed that now what he has packed inside the bag he has kept his spectacles our kanadiyum ulle vechi bag close paniyaachu marbudiyum and the kanadi theaterthukku he had to kanadi spectacles he, he kept his spectacles also inside and he packed it ipo marbudiyum he had to open it again 
and finally you know what time he finished his packing 10 pm 10 5 pm ku finish pandraaru packing and now george and harris they decided to pack the food hampers hampers abina basket with a lid hamper na na basket with a lid in the basket with the lid edhuk use pannuvaanga abina the food items la kondu porathukaga the baskets will they will take it for a trip and that is called a hamper ipo the hamper vandu Uh, at least they have to pack up George and Harris uh, so they said they decided to pack the food hampers let's see what happened now George and Harris's time this is they started packing and uh, they wanted to show that they were better than Jerome at packing and uh, Jerome was uh, also quiet and he was uh, excited to see how they do their job they started now the first thing they started with was they broke a cup next what harris did was the first st- the start only was breaking of a cup then what harris did was harris squashed a tomato by placing the strawberry jam on top of it what he did tomatoes were kept down actually tomatoes should not be packed down it should be kept on top because it will get squashed if something uh, heavy is kept on at on the tomatoes right enna panitaru harris strawberry jam bottle eduthe tomatoes mele vecha odna oru tomato enna aidichi it got squashed squashed na abbe nursing idichi tomatoes and here what he did was he had to take clean that tomato with a teaspoon he took a teaspoon and he cleaned that uh, tomato which was squashed and next what uh, george did was george he stepped on the he trod on the butter trod means abbe butter midichitar yare george butter mela kaala vechi butter enna aidichi ella nasing idichi ipdi poidichi butter ella velila vandirchi Now it was Jerome's turn to sit back and he started to watch when Jerome was packing the other bag who was sitting and watching nicely George and Harris were sitting and watching no now it was Jerome's turn so he sat and watched and that actually that irritated them see what all they did just as Jerome was just sitting and watching them right they stepped on the things ellam things mele midichi they put the things behind them pinadi vechitte after then they started to search for the things they could not find it when they wanted it when they needed them they had to search for the things and then what they did they put that pai pai is dosa madri soft ana ore pai pai singrathu the choco pai illa saapringla and the madri and the choco pai bottom la putta adu yaravathu bottom la puduvaangla that's a soft thing no to eat and what they did they put the heavy things on top of it that shows that they did not know how to pack and what happened to the pies all the pies was squashed ada pe ella udri poyiduchi and then they poured salt everywhere uh, butter was uh, stamped by uh, uh, harry sorry george so all this was done now what happened was george uh, what your slippers la the butter you know that got stuck to the slip to george's slippers then he took it out of the slippers and what he did he put it in the kettle but the butter didn't go inside the kettle he pulled it out and put it on a chair and what happened harris sat on it on the butter and the butter stuck to his back it's so humorous so funny you know and uh, they were all, they were searching around looking for it for a long time after searching for it for a long time you know only later george finds or he discovers that it was at the back of harris now time was also getting wasted finally they packed it in the teapot they put that butter in the teapot and they packed it now there is another new character which has come into the lesson that is their pet dog mont morency is the name of the pet dog now this pet dog is uh, brought into the scene 
uh, only to add some commotion, only to add some fun, you know, this uh, Montmorency is introduced. It's a very naughty dog, you know. The main aim in life of uh, this uh, Montmorency is to create trouble and get scolded by someone. Otherwise, it cannot sleep. Other than the Montmorency would be a main aim, and the naughty dog would be a main aim. Daily, Argeti are the Tituangi, are the trouble Pono, Yati are the Tituangi. Is that the main aim? It was only when somebody screams at it, it feels that uh, his day has not been wasted. Yarada, the Katinada, the Kati, Titi. Scold panna da, adudi a day when the complete ides in adkor nenep. So just when things were getting ready, you know, and it was getting packed, he came into the room, and what he did was he sat on all the things that was getting packed. Whenever uh, Harris or George, you know, they extended their hand for something, extended means, idhi yede adhi yede ne kahiye bini trolla. At the neat mode, Montmorency made it a point that they reach for his nose. He put his leg into the jam, and what he did was he um, uh, the, he took the teaspoons and uh, rearranged it. And what he did, he also uh, uh, saw the lemons that was kept in the hamper. He thought the lemons were rats and started to fight with the lemons see all this was done by this montmorency eppala kai neetrangla avangitta mooku kondu vandu kaatrade and then jam kulla dudi legga podrade teaspoons ela organized a vechirukirathu vande disorganize pandrade and then lemons oda sanda podrade all this job who did montmorency was such a naughty dog that they could not control him at all after so many difficulties after so many problems and then efforts hard work my it was finally packed the packing was done when it was completed at 12:50 now what harris did harris harris after packing the hamper he sits on the hamper to see that if uh, if everything is packed properly now everything was packed finally they had to they they were all getting ready for bed and they decided to wake up at half past 6 that is at 6:30 and this george was already asleep by then he was so tired and he was already asleep and what this jerome and harris did you know they placed a tub a bath tub near uh, uh, george's bed so that when he gets up in the morning he would tumble into uh, the but up okay so all this was a kind of a game that they wanted to play with and they also went to bed so this is their experience of packing okay children now i i think i've done the summary and you have understood the lesson now we i'm going to read the chapter paragraph by paragraph turn with me to page number 82 So let's start reading. I said I'd pack. I would pack. I'd pack means I would pack. I rather pride myself on my packing. Packing is one of those many things that I feel I know more about than any other person living. It surprises me myself sometimes how many such things there are. I impressed the fact upon George and Harris and told them that they had better leave the whole matter entirely to me. They fell into the suggestion with a readiness that had something uncanny about it. George spread himself over the easy chair and Harris cocked his legs on the table. So this means Jerome the narrator he was very pr- proud of himself he said he would pack himself and he asked them to better leave the whole matter to him and uh, george and harris were so ready they showed that readiness to jerome uh, and what did they do one sat on the easy chair that is george and harris cocked his legs on the 
stable. Pride myself on. Pride myself on means to be proud. Fell into. Fell into here is accepted. Who accepted? Yes, George and Harris accepted not to do any work. And then what's uncanny? Uncanny means very strange, very weird you can say. And then cocked his legs. I already gave you the meaning. Cocked his legs. Cocked his legs means crossed his legs as he sat. This was hardly what I intended. What I had meant, of course, was that I should boss the job and that Harris and George should potter about under my directions. I pushing them aside every now and then with, Oh, you, here, let me do it. There you are, simple enough. Really teaching them, as you might say. They're taking it in the way they did irritated me. There is nothing does irritate me more than seeing other people just sitting about doing nothing when I am working. I lived with a man once who used to make me mad that way. He would loll on the sofa and watch me doing things by the hour together. He said it did him real good to look, at, look on at me messing about. Now I am not like that. I can't sit still and see another man slaving and working. I want to get up and superintend and walk round with my hands in my pockets and tell him what to do. It is my energetic nature. I can't help it. What was Jerome's intention here? He wanted to boss over the other two. He wanted to give them directions. Isn't it? He wanted to superintend. And he's talking about a man whom he lived with. That man used to see George working, sorry, not George, Jerome working very hard. And uh, he liked it, he said, it seems. But uh, Jerome was not a person of that kind. He did not like to sit down and uh, see another man slaving or working. He just wanted to go around, keep his hands in his pockets, walk around and tell them what to do because he was a very energetic person. And that's how Jerome was, isn't it? Yeah, let's see to the meanings. Intended. Intended means planned, potter about, potter about, do some unimportant things. Then it is loll on the sofa. That is to just lie down or to lean in a very relaxed manner. Next is messing about. Messing about is wasting, to waste time or wasting time running about here and there doing nothing. Sit still. Sit still is sit without doing anything. Superintend. Superintend means supervise. What is superintend? Superintend is supervise. However, I did not say anything but started the packing. It seemed a longer job than I had thought it was going to be. But I got the bag finished at last and I sat on it and strapped it. Aren't you going to put the boots in? said Harris. And I looked around and found that I had forgotten them. That's just like Harris. He couldn't have said a word until I'd got the bag shut and strapped, of course. And George laughed. One of those irritating, senseless laughs of his. They do make me so wild. Aren't you? Aren't you means aren't you. Aren't you. Other than aren't you. A-I-N apostrophe T is aren't you. Abina, aren't are not you aren't you okay it's a short form of that i opened the bag and packed the boots in and then just as i was going to close it a horrible idea occurred to me had i packed my toothbrush i don't know how it is but i never do know whether i've packed my toothbrush my toothbrush is a thing that haunts me 
when I'm traveling and makes my life a misery. I dream that I haven't packed it and wake up in a cold perspiration and get out of bed and hunt for it. And in the morning, I pack it before I have used it and have to unpack again to get it. And it is always the last thing I turn out of the bag and then I repack and forget it and have to rush upstairs for it at the last moment and carry it to the railway station wrapped up in my pocket handkerchief. I told you, you remember the toothbrush incident when I gave you the summary? Yes, while packing he forgot his boots first and then finally his toothbrush and that toothbrush haunts him. Now let's see to the word uh, hard words and its meanings. Strapped it. Strapped it means closed it. Wild. Wild is mad with anger. Haunts. What do you mean by haunts? Haunts means to repeatedly give trouble. Misery. Misery is very sad. Cold perspiration. Cold perspiration means sweat. Sweaty. Okay. And then hunt is search. Of course, I had to turn every mortal thing out now. And of course, I could not find it. I rummaged the things up into much the same state that they must have been before the world was created. And when chaos reigned, of course, I found George's and Harris's 18 times over, but I couldn't find my own. I put the things back one by one and held everything up and shook it. Then I found it inside a boot. I repacked once more. When I finished, George asked if the soap was in. I said I didn't care a hang whether the soap was in or whether it wasn't. And I slammed the bag and shut and strapped it and found that I had packed my spectacles in it and had to reopen it. It got shut up finally at 10.05 p.m. And then there remained the hampers to do. Harris said that we should be wanting to start in less than 12 hours time and thought that he and George had better do the rest. And I agreed and sat down and they had a go. I told you right, he searched for his toothbrush and 18 times he found George's and Harris's toothbrush but he could not find his. And finally what happened? He had to throw everything down and repack it. And where was his uh, toothbrush? It was found in, the, in one of his boots, right? And then finally again he had to do everything and finish the work and he strapped the bag. And now whose turn was it? George's and Harris's turn to pack the hampers. Let's see to the word meanings. Word meanings are mortal thing. Mortal thing means every ordinary thing. Rummaged. Rummaged means searched in a very careless way. Just like that here and there. Just looking here and there but not very carefully. Searched in a very careless way. Chaos. Chaos means commotion, confusion. And then reigned. Reigned means ruled. Didn't care a hang. What do you mean by didn't care a hang? Didn't care a hang means show no interest. Sometimes we don't, if, if uh, we don't show interest in anything, you just can say, just to avoid it, I, I care a hang for it, I, you can say. Okay? And then comes slammed. Slammed means shut the lid forcefully and loudly and then comes hampers hampers are baskets with the lid lid on top of it and you know that is to carry food items utensils utensils like these plates glasses cups spoons okay these crockery items are also there so a separate bag is used to carry such luggage and that is called the hampers they began in a light-hearted spirit, evidently intending to show me how to do it. I made no comment. I only waited. With the exception of George, 
Harris is the worst packer in this world. And I looked at the piles of plates and cups and kettles and bottles and jars and pies and stoves and cakes and tomatoes, etc. and felt that the thing would soon become exciting. It did. They started with breaking a cup. That was the first thing they did. They did that just to show you what they could do and to get you interested. Then Harris packed the strawberry jam on top of a tomato and squashed it. And they had to pick out the tomato with a teaspoon. And then it was George's turn. And he trod on the butter. I didn't say anything, but I came over and sat on the edge of the table and watched them. It irritated them more than anything I could have said. I felt that. It made them nervous and excited, and they stepped on things and put things behind them and then couldn't find them when they wanted them and they packed the pies at the bottom and put the heavy things on top and smashed the pies in. See what all they did. You remember what I told you? The tomatoes were squashed, squashed the pies were smashed and then they broke a teacup. So all this they did. But who was the worst packer in the world, he says. Jerome calls Harris the worst packer. They couldn't find, they trod on it. Trod means they stamped the butter. They put it somewhere here and there. All this commotion, is, it was just chaos over there. Light-hearted spirit. Light-hearted spirit means to be very cheerful. Cheerful, uh, they started with real fun. They were very light-hearted. And you know they wanted to show Jerome that they are also they were also good at packing. And then comes evidently, evidently means clearly. Then exception. Exception is a person or thing that does not follow the general rule. And then comes squashed. Squashed means squeeze something with force so that it becomes flat. Have you all uh, seen a tooth paste? You just squeeze it or, or press it, you know what happens? The paste comes out and that surface becomes flat. So that is squeeze, squashed. So what was squashed? The tomatoes were squashed. And then comes trod on. Trod on means stepped on. Trod on means stepped on or stamped also you can say. They upset salt over everything and as for the butter, I never saw two men do more with one and two pence worth of butter in my whole life than they did. After George had got it off his slipper, they tried to put it in the kettle. It wouldn't go in and what was in wouldn't come out. They did scrape it out at last and put it down on a chair and Harris sat on it and it stuck to him and they went looking for it all over the room. I'll take my oath, I put it down on that chair, said George staring at the empty seat. I saw you do it myself not a minute ago, said Harris. Then they started round the room again looking for it and then they met again in the center and stared at each other. Most extraordinary thing I ever heard of, said George. So mysterious, said Harris. Then George got round at the back of Harris and saw it. Why, here it is all the time, he exclaimed indignantly. Where, cried Harris, spinning round. Stand still, can't you? roared George, flying after him. And they got it off and packed it in the teapot. Montmorency was in it all, of course. Montmorency's ambition in life is to get in the way and be sworn at. He can squirm in anywhere where he particularly is not wanted 
and be a perfect nuisance and make people mad and have things thrown at his head, then he feels his day has not been wasted. To get somebody to stumble over him and curse him steadily for an hour is his highest aim and object. And when he has succeeded in accomplishing this, his conceit becomes quite unbearable. So what happened? The salt is thrown here and there and the butter, you know the butter incident that happened. George stamped the butter and then he took it from his slippers and put it on a chair. And who sat on that chair? George, he kept it on the chair and Harris sits on that and after some time they search for the butter all over in the room and then finally they found it and then what happened now comes uh, the new character that is Montmorency the dog and this uh, dog's ambition in life is to get scolded from everyone only then it feels that its day is perfect you got it? Let's see to the meanings. Scrape. Scrape means pull. Oath. Oath is to swear. To promise you can say. And then indignantly. Indignantly in a manner indicating at something perceived as unfair. When something is going wrong, when it is wrong, you say, you show that, feel that it is wrong. Okay? And then sworn at, sworn, sworn at means get scolded. Who's getting the scolding? Montmorency. Then squirm, squirm means twist one's body. You have, have you seen these dogs going round and round? That is squirm. And then comes nuisance. Nuisance is to cause inconvenience, to trouble, to be a trouble somewhere. Okay, that is nuisance. And then comes stumble. Stumble means to trip over a hurdle. Okay, tadiki vildradda, stumble. And then comes curse. Curse means scold. What is curse? Curse means scold. Conceit. Here, his pride in himself. Conceit means what? His pride in himself. Pride means what is pride? Pride means pyramid, yes. He came and sat down on things just when they were wanted to be packed. And he labored under the fixed belief that whenever Harris or George reached out their hand for anything, it was his cold, damp nose that they wanted. He put his leg into the jam and he worried the teaspoons and he pretended that the lemons were rats and got into the hamper and killed three of them before Harris could land him with the frying pan. Harris said, I encouraged him. I didn't encourage him. A dog like that doesn't want any encouragement. It's the natural original sin that is born in him that makes him do things like that. The packing was done at 12.50 and Harris sat on the big hamper and said he hoped nothing would be found broken. George said that if anything was broken, it was broken, which reflection seemed to comfort him. He also said he was ready for bed. We were all ready for bed. Harris was to sleep with us that night and we went upstairs. Word meanings, worried, worried means very disturbed. Pretended, pretended means uh, to behave as if something is true when you know it is not. Okay? And then land him, land him means hit someone. This dog was uh, hit by Harris with a frying pan. Vadasati edithu dosa tava, sorry, tava edithu, frying pan na dosa tava edithu, yaar adike ponnaar Harris, he went and hit Mount Morency. And then comes reflection, reflection means thought, reflection means thought. 
We tossed for beds and Harris had to sleep with me, he said. Do you prefer the inside or the outside, Jerome? I said I generally prefer to sleep inside a bed. Harris said it was odd. George said, What time shall I wake you fellows? Harris said, Seven. I said, No, six, because I wanted to write some letters. Harris and I had a bit of a row over it, but at last split the difference and said half past six. Wake us at 6.30, George, we said. George made no answer and we found on going over that he had been asleep for some time. So we placed the bath where he could tumble into it on getting out in the morning and went to bed ourselves. Word meanings are tossed. Tossed means throw something somewhere. So they tossed for beds. They threw this and that. They were fighting uh, for the beds and they threw uh, things like pillows and all that on each other. A bit of a row. A bit of a row means an argument. A bit of a row means it is an argument. Then comes tumble. Tumble means to fall quickly. Tumble means what? To fall quickly. And there's another meaning in your textbook that is split the difference. Split the difference means that they agreed on 6.30 because it was halfway between 6 and 7. They didn't want uh, 6 nor they wanted 7. So half the way. So they split the time that is at 6.30. So I think you understood the chapter and it is a nice chapter written by Jerome K. Jerome and it is an extract from Three Men in a Boat. Hope you all enjoyed the lesson children. Thank you very much.